Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm on the front end of the episode this edition. Um, <laughs> got to talking with my homeboy, Roke, which you're about to hear here in a second and whatnot. He has transitioned from a career in the military to being a nasty civilian like myself. <laughs> so um, that's what you're pretty much going to be in store for. We, we trail off into a little bit of professional wrestling talk. And um, but we talk about his uh, transitioning, you know, just the whole experience of him getting out his uh, thought process of the thing and um, what he's doing as a civilian now. Uh, currently, I think as this goes up, he should be rolling around in England somewhere as he alluded toward the end of this interview and uh, just living his best life at the moment. So. You'll figure out how he wound up in England doing England shit in, uh, or London or England, London, England. There you go. <laughs> Geography people. But, uh, yeah, this episode kind of turned out weird. I didn't have an intro or anything like I normally do. Just kind of like with Sir John Lee and everything. But, uh, Roque is tired. And this, this is the third in the trilogy of, uh, the theme tired. We talk with, um, DeAndre Wilson, he pushes a tire around town to raise uh, awareness about cancer and everything for the Keep It Rolling Foundation and whatnot. And then we had uh, Jason Richardson, a CEO and owner of uh, the J1 Studios and uh, the purveyor of J1 Con and a couple other things he got going on. And he is just tired because he is a man of uh, many things, uh, the studio. You got the VT Heroes coming out, which is a card game, hosting the, the Comic Cons that he does and all kinds of things. So during that interview, you can tell in his voice and his manner of speak that he was tired. And it's the same thing here with Roque, just being a civilian, being in that lifestyle and uh, getting adjusted. He's working two jobs right now, not because he's in debt or anything like that, but it's just to keep busy. And through the power of editing and everything through this conversation, Dude was not known for me, man. He was, and you can kind of tell in his voice, he was kind of like, he was, he was, he was tired. He was sleepy. So this is the third in the Tired Man trilogy. <laughs> and uh, I hope you enjoy this edition of the Random Rambles with Rob podcast. You got new shows every Sunday. Here we go. Yeah, but I mean, so how long has it been since you've been out? <laughs> Uh, so my last day was September 14 of this year, and um, I actually stuck around for two extra weeks on island, not by choice, mm -hmm. because mainly it was just, um, it's really hard to get a plane ticket from my dog. Yeah. So that was like the biggest thing. Uh, and it kind of sucks for me because, I mean, I, I wanted to leave to kind of just like start things off. I didn't, I didn't have the opportunity to take uh terminal leave yeah so i basically stayed to my to my end of contract date and i actually flew so i flew into dallas and then i ran the car from dallas and drove away all the way to north carolina because again it was my dog had an extra large kennel and it was like practically impossible trying to get him a flight to north carolina in the time that i had yeah. planned out so, I mean, I drove from Texas to North Carolina. It was about three hour or two day drive, stopped in Alabama for just to sleep and kind of just went from there. Word. So, I mean, did you, did you uh, do anything else cool besides stopping in Alabama? You ain't sightsee or nothing, see any monuments and whatnot? I don't even know what the fuck is between Dallas and North Carolina. Yeah, I know. <laughs> nah, I literally just went straight to Alabama. I drove eight hours. I went to a bar that night, came back to my hotel room slept, woke up with Kane, and then drove eight hours to North Carolina. I mean, well, got, got it on a Friday because I purposely ran out of the vehicle yeah. to where I needed to return it in two days. So I didn't have time to like sightsee or look around and stuff like that. And um, I had the airline take my, my luggage all the way to North Carolina. So like I had it, I wanted to get there as soon as possible to grab all my stuff. And then the first weekend, the first weekend out, I didn't do anything, honestly, until that following Monday when I was like, all right, I need to go to the gym. I need to find a job, blah, blah, blah. Because I've been winging it since day one, to be honest with you. Like, I haven't, 
I, everyone talks about like having them and I get it like in the Marine Corps, which is good. Um, you go to TRS or Seth and Taps or whatever you want to call it. And, um, they, they give you good information. They show you how to do a resume. They, they tell you the ins and outs of how to get in a job and how to dress professional. But I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, it's like, you don't really know what you're doing until you're out there. And it's, I, I kind kind of like, I, when I think about it, it's like, think about like high school, you know, like in high school, you learn all these things, but then like when you go out in the real world, you're like, Oh shit, they didn't never taught me this in high school. So it's the same thing in the Marine Corps. And it's, it's not anything new realistically that I'm doing. It's just like, I guess I appreciate things more because yes, I did 10 years and some change in the Marine Corps and like nothing was given to me, but I feel like everything, everything was given to me at the same time. If that makes sense. Yeah. I know exactly what you was talking about. Cause like, being separated myself man it was just like i don't I, i'm now realizing how good we had it on the inside versus being on the outside for the first time i, I wouldn't say good <laughs> um I, I think it, it's like they they spoil you yeah. to an extent and then i guess it's like a different it's a different definition of spoil because it's not a spoil where like you we live like kings because we both know that's not the case true i think it's more of a spoiled in the aspect of like job security. Yeah. Um, it's more spoiled in the aspect of like, you know, no matter what the situation, like, you know, that you can have someone in chain of command or someone in that specifically, like in that specific area is going to take care of you. So that that's more spoiled than how it is like being out where like, you know, now it's every man for themselves. Right? And yeah. if yeah. I don't do what I'm supposed to do, like I'm, my bills are not going to get paid. Yeah. It's almost like college in a sense. Well, what I would imagine college would have been because like school, you know, high, all the way from the high school, you know, do this, do this here. You got this assignment due. This is the days you got to turn it in. Blah, 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 blah. You get to college. It's just like, hey, motherfucker, welcome. Then they just throw a whole bunch of shit at you. and you Get it done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can see that. But I mean, it's like, but in, it's, it's such a more relaxed place, like being out, like you're in your own, you know, headspace and you do things on your own time and you kind of like slowly project your own constantly. You're not waking up and going to work and feeling like you're letting someone down. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. um, I think for me, the biggest thing was just like not going to the field, making sure that I'm doing what I need to do to take care of my kids. Yeah. There's more accountability for self than others, more than likely now. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I, I, again, like, I just, I, I, I appreciate the time that I did in the, Mar- the, the time that I did in the Marine Corps and like what the Marine Corps taught me. But at the same time, like, I'm very glad that I got out when I got out yeah. because it's allowed me to like experience another, you know, thing that I never had before. And I don't ever see myself back in any military branch whatsoever. Um, knock on wood. Um, but it, yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing. Like, I just, I'm happy. And like, I work two jobs, but I work those two jobs just to maintain, like being busy and stuff like that. It's not one of those like, Oh, you know, like I'm struggling and blah, blah, blah. And I think that I left the Marine Corps the right way. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I decided to get out, obviously it was kind of like, um, I kept it to myself as much as possible. And when it was time to bounce, I, it was, I just bounced and I didn't have a going away. I didn't have any of that. It was just like, it was easier for me to just leave than trying to like, I guess, look for some type of approval. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, and especially I, with all their Marines. Mm. Yeah, well, you you had that luxury. I couldn't do that. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, yeah, you had that whole ceremony and shit. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, and it's like when I left, and the same thing. It's like the aspect, like I gave away all my uniforms. I literally give away everything. Mm-hmm. I have to my name for uh, I think like a shirt. I I uh, actually I have a. Uh, a Charlie shirt and, a, and so a, a set of, of chucks. And the only reason why I have them and a pair of camis. And the only reason why I have those two items is because my DMO showed up. They took all my stuff and those are the only two military items that they left were camis and chucks because you never know. You, um, 
I might need them. Yeah. And my DMO showed up like a whole month before I even got out. Mm-hmm. Other than that, like literally everything else is military related. I got rid of, I got rid of my, my, uh, alphas and my blues. I actually gave up my blues so I can put them on a plaque. Like I got rid of all my stuff, all my skivvy shirts, all my socks. Like I absolutely have nothing military related because my thing is like, all right, I'm going to get out. Like I need to focus on being out. Like I don't, I don't want to focus on being depressed and thinking about the Marine Corps. And I yeah. honestly feel that's like, that's why a lot of Marines nowadays like are killing themselves and hurting themselves and stuff like that. It's just because like they can't let that shit go. Mm-hmm. And then the perfect example is like drill instructors, like drill instructors, you have, you can be the shittiest fucking Marine. And then you go be, become a drill instructor. You come back to the fleet and you think you're shit hot. Like, bro, no, you're still trash. <laughs> just because you found out that, just because you, you found out that you're good at being a drill instructor doesn't mean you're good at your M1. Yeah. And those are the people that tend to get out because they think that they've made it in the Marine Corps. They get out thinking they can do the same thing. And it's the complete opposite. And then boom, go their dad. Yeah, man, I, I can kind of relate in the sense to where, you know, we go by these guidelines that the Marine Corps lays out for us or whatever. And me going into a security job to where we handle weapons and shit, you know, that first weapon safety class had me on edge. <laughs> so, like, these motherfuckers pointing the pistol in the classroom and shit with other people sitting in there. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? About to jump the table and be like, "Hey, you flagging motherfuckers! God damn it!" <laughs> What's well, like um, me when when I decided when I was getting ready to, to like get out and everything, like I literally waited till the last minute to like turn my car in, turn the stuff in. I submitted, I even submitted a real enlistment package just to see what the Marine Corps says. Even though in my my mind I was I was I was destined to get out, but I had a pretty good idea that I was going to get out. I still kept my door open. I kept, still kept my options open. I mean, I, I signed a piece of paper at, the, at page 11 at the end of the day that says that I'm never going to join the Marine Corps again, which I'm completely fine with. Um, it just means that, you know, I have to make it out here because um, I can't go back, but I don't want to use the Marine Corps to crutch. So, I mean, and I feel like I've done that. but like, so, I mean, <laughs> first day, uh, well, not first days or whatever, but like, Getting there, getting down to North Carolina and everything. What, what was that first week like? All right. So my first week, I want to say it was confused. I, I get it was confusing, and um, I during those two days that I was traveling from Texas to North Carolina, the first thing I I told myself was I'm going to take a break from social media, which I have been really good at. Um, honestly, since I got out, um, that's the first thing I went on my Instagram live as well as my Facebook live. And I was like, hey, I'm taking a break from social media. Uh, if you guys need anything, like I'm still be around. I'm just not going to be posting content or putting anything um, as I usually do. And I think that the reason for that was, um, you know, fresh out, just wanted to make sure that, you know, I take care of myself yeah. and not worry about what's happening in the Marine Corps. Um, that was mid September. Then November came around. We all know what November is. Yep. The Marine Corps birthday. Um, that was even, I wouldn't say it was harder, honestly. Um, but because I already had a system, I stayed out. I stayed away from social media as much as possible. Just because, you know, I don't want to be like seeing all these pictures of like the balls and videos and stuff like that. And I'm over here at work wishing I was there. And then that, that makes me, that would make me depressed. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that has happened. Um, from that moment or from that day where like, I'm like, all right, this is the stuff that I need to do. Like, I need to get away from social media, um, until, you know, I get my shit straight. I get my stuff together because nobody wants to, like, no one cares, um, what's going on in your life. But at the same time, like, I have to make sure that I'm comfortable before I go out there and try to make other people happy. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, do, doing your week hiatus from social media and anything, whatever, I mean, what what activities you was getting into, man? Would you out perusing the, the landscape and everything? We, I mean, hold on. Before you even get to that, I know I asked, but I forgot because I'm old. And why North Carolina? <laughs> All right. So, I went to Puerto Rico in April for my birthday and um, just kind of just went out there to go to Pedalsi family. 
there's absolutely nothing there for me. Mm -hmm. So I already knew, like I had that in my mind that I wanted to maybe go to Puerto Rico, but obviously I noticed that there, there's nothing there. So I did not go there. Um, I went back in June when my uncle passed and I was just like kind of more hesitant about going. And then I, since I knew there was nothing in Puerto Rico, I'm like, all right, I have to still be close to home. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, I have friends in pretty much every state because obviously like, you know, yeah. you know, you meet someone in the Marine Corps, like that kind of bond sticks together. Like you can't, you don't have to talk for someone for 10 years, but then the moment you see them, it's like it, nothing, like you never lost in touch with that person. Yeah. And, uh, my mom's, tw my mom's twin sister actually lives up here in North Carolina, about 40 minutes or 30 minutes or so from where I live right now. And, um, she's had like a lot of like medical stuff going on with her, blah, blah, blah. So I was just like, um, so I hit her up and yeah, that's, that's who I stayed with for about a month before my apartment was ready. Um, the first week I didn't really go out or do anything really, really because I was like, I didn't, my vehicle wasn't here and it took longer than I should have uh, for me to get my vehicle. So I didn't have anything but just a normal, like a candle or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just, just to begin. And like when I got my apartment, you know, little by little, I've been like setting it up or whatnot. And it's nothing that I'm rushing about or like trying to get done by a certain time. But, um, I just want to make, like, again, it makes you appreciate things a little more because like everything that I own now, it's mine. You know what I mean? Like I don't own anyone, anything. And I've been busting my ass for myself. So I guess it gives you a different type of appreciation for your things that you did have that you didn't have before. Yeah. Because now you're actually seeing something like grow out of nothing. Yeah, and it wasn't no hand me down shits that the motherfuckers had before you. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. They'd be like, here, take this. This vest was worn by five motherfuckers before you. <laughs> it's still good. And I've learned I have learned to like be I wouldn't say cheap, but I've like I've been I've learned to like watch my money and not splurge as much and like I'll go to Goodwill just to see like what they have only if I like one thing. Um, but it's cause you never know. Like you might find someone else that, um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never know. <laughs> yeah. But shit, man. You know, on a side note, you've been keeping up with wrestling. I have been keeping up with wrestling. Um, not as, religiously as I used to. Um, I really think like, I know what's happening, but I haven't really yeah. like been focusing too much on it. I know like TLC is coming up. Um, I have not seen a single episode off of um, Cody a Rose company. Yeah. AEW. AEW. Like I have not seen a single episode from that um, at all. Not because I don't want to, but because I haven't had the chance. Um, but I mean, I've kept up with majority of the storylines. Um, and I haven't seen it yet. My plan is to see it tonight raw. Um, I saw Seth Rollins. Um, I, oh, I read excuse me, Seth Rollins, um, join APW or, or AOP yeah. and like beat the crap out of Kevin Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens. Um, you know, I was a big, always been, a, I always been a big fan of the divas, uh, division and I guess all that Blix came back and beat the crap out of uh sorry, Mandy Moore Mandy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I had a question for you now that you brought up wrestling. Yes sir. What do you think they're gonna do with Liv, with Liv Morgan? What do you think they're gonna do with her? Yeah, because apparently like um they are showing on Raw oh, that like the makeup and like coming soon. Oh yeah. I honestly I, I thought that they were gonna use her when she first when she first got beat by by Charlotte and like through that whole uh, fit and bounced out. I thought she was going to get put with, uh, Bray Wyatt. Um, yeah. With Bray Wyatt as sister Abigail. Yes. Yeah, so because I've never shown who sister Abigail is. So I, I mean, she's crazy enough to be a good fit 
um, into that little world, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a lot of the speculation um, being tossed around at the wrestling fan, the realm of wrestling fans and whatnot. And I wouldn't be opposed to it, but we almost did have an incarnation of Sister Abigail, if you remember when <laughs> they were supposed to do that shit with uh, exactly. him and Finn Balor or whatever, and he was going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, I wanted to see that so bad, but I think what he got hurt or, yeah, Bray got hurt or some shit, right? Yeah. Yeah, so but then I, I mean Br- Bray's gone through so much because you know he was supposed to debut, then debut at first, then he was you know when he was NXT, yeah, that's Husky Harris, and then he came out as Bray Wyatt. Then he had the family that didn't last long because they kind of like separated, um, and then you know Bray, you know Bray Wyatt lasted as much, and then all of a sudden you know. He comes out, he got injured, mm-hmm. came out with this new character, which, I mean, it's been really popular. Yeah. What blows my mind is the $7,000 belt that they that they have on the, now, see, the website. Good. Now, I'm glad you brought that up because I've been waiting to talk to somebody voice to voice about that whole thing. So my, my, my thing about that is, is like um, one is I don't think it's direct. It's not direct from WWE is from the. Um, people that made all his prosthetics and his uh, mask and all this stuff. Um, the Savini guy, guy who did a lot of yeah. um, special effects from a dust till dawn and all kind of shit like that. So those products are coming from that company specifically. They're just selling third party through WWE. But at the same mm-hmm. time, I feel like the price is so freaking high is because they really don't want nobody to buy them shits. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want anybody to buy them, but if you crazy enough to buy it, yeah, it's going to be high as fuck. You know, you're going to really pay for it if you really want it, but they don't want nobody to buy it. Well, I think also at the same time, I think they're doing, um, they're not making belts until they get an order, so they don't have any pre-made belts done already for the simple fact that they would be expensive to make Mm -hmm. for the price that they're charging. Yeah, that too. That could be a, a simple reason as well. But I, but I mean, do I do I think that it's necessary? No, no. Um, I do think that it is necessary for the fiend to have its own belt. Yes, being that Bray Wyatt has a belt, um, because that, it would make sense, especially that's an alter ego. What I don't care for is the booking that he's getting. He's getting the same booking that John Cena got in 2015, yeah. where he like never lost a single freaking match. What's and it? every paper it was on. Yeah. And I feel like this is the same thing with with protein. But this, this is the thing too, man. It's just they booked him so strong. You know, you see what he went through with the Seth match and all kind of stuff like that. And yeah. who is really primed enough to beat him? I mean, they've storyline wise, I feel like they're setting up Brian to do it maybe because, you know, Fiend attacked him. And everything, and he um, ripped out his hair. I'm doing air quotes, but um, mm-hmm. and he hasn't been seen since. So maybe he'll reemerge on the other end later on, and you know, vanquish the fiend later. That's kind of how I see see it going. But just Bray Wyatt, the character, because he is in character on Twitter, he was saying, and I kind of believe it to be so because of how it's presented on tv he was saying you can't kill the fiend under the red light or you can't kill it under the red light that's why every match he's in he has the red light on and until somebody figures that out he will not be beaten just yeah. just kind of putting what's presented to me together and that's kind of how i see it because i mean it's, anything that he said on twitter has kind of been played out on tv he talked shit to randy orton and I think he had a little bit of interaction with him, but not fully. He talked shit to Seth Rollins on Twitter, had some shit with Seth Rollins. Everybody that he said something about on Twitter, like I remember or some crap like that, he had some kind of interaction or jumped their ass on TV. No, no, absolutely. So we'll see who going to find the red light special. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you think uh, the card is coming along for TLC? Um, they did um, announce, I think, two or three matches. So they have, um, well, I'm pretty much sure that they're setting the fiend with, uh, the Miz, Miz yeah. just because Fiend. of what had happened yeah, yeah. the past Friday, 
which I mean is good because it's uh, the myth is a good person to put any rising stars with. Mm-hmm. I just don't understand the fiends. Like if he's a heel or a baby face, I don't think anyone like, knows. I think he's just badass. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just let's just call him badass. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a he's, um, a, he's a badass. <laughs> yeah. So they have um. Right now, they just had the Kabuki Warriors versus uh, Becky Lynch and Charlotte for oh man, raw tag titles. Uh, man, you know they winning, right? Becky and Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Well, see, that's what I, I just I'm just so over the between like her and Sasha and and Charlotte. Like I'm I'm sick and tired of their friendship, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they go back to friendship. You know what I mean? Yeah. They f- they fight like oh they, they come back they fight they go away they come back they fight they go away they come yeah. back. Well, it's like the thing. It's like the thing that happened um for Black Friday and it, it was a big it was a huge deal where WWE kind of say out the cards wrong because they were they've had people go against each other on set uh you know that day or let's say during that week heels versus baby faces and then all of a sudden without any explanation. They're part of a team, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for Survivor Series, it's like, and all that shit. This stupid ass yeah, shit. Sorry, sir. Yeah, and I mean, everyone's Raw's up to SmackDown was up to, so they were tied. They weren't going to give the the win to anyone except six to make sure that the other ones don't compete. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like how they put NXT over on that point because they um. They are a new brand under the WWE umbrella, and they want to present them mm. as you know being on par with Raw and SmackDown. So I wouldn't oppose to that. I wish I was, yeah. But man, <laughs> um, and then out of Roman Reigns and King Corbin, who do you think that'll win? Man, if it ain't no shenanigans, uh, Roman Reigns is gonna win, no doubt. See, and then the thing is, like, I'm almost so sick of him because I do. You get his. Well, I mean, he got he got his. He got embarrassed the other night. Mm-hmm. So you got to get his. Come- so, I mean, that you got to get it back. You got to get his comeuppance. <laughs> and it's like it's getting so predictable because, like, you usually never see anyone that wants actual products. Like, get it out of. Okay, let's see. Let's say you want a specific item, right? And then, um, for example, like, um. Roman Reigns, right? Yeah. The Roman Reigns they use was a dog food because yeah. they they the you know the, dog in the yard or whatever the hell the catchphrase is. <laughs> um, but then like for WWE, like it's becoming so predictable where like you know someone that you know for a fact is gonna lose on Sunday, they'll give them the win the, the week prior. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like let's say oh, so for example, Roman Reigns King Corbin, this whole time. Everything that Corbin has thrown to Reigns, Reigns has dodged. And then all of a sudden, this past week, all this, like, now he's, you know, cuffed up in a pose and they got the dog, dog put all over him. Like, you know damn well that King Corbin's not going to win come Sunday. Yeah. And, and I mean, just, you know what I'm and just the Corbin character, as is anyway, you, do you really think he's going to win? <laughs> They, I mean, I feel like they're trying to. There's, there's a reason why because that has been getting a lot of TV time. Yeah, I mean, they like him. You know, I mean, he. Yeah. As far as backstage shit go, they like him or whatever, and he's like a heel. Nobody really, you know, likes him or whatever. So I mean, they play that up. It's like, oh, you don't like him, huh? We're gonna put him out there, you know that shit. But I, I don't think he's a bad professional wrestler. I like him, but I just don't like him the way they portray him on TV right now. I thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I liked him. I, and not, I, I, not, I really, not like dead, but I'm saying yeah. like, I just, yeah, I just, I think like there's, this is, you know, this is going to be the complete honest. Vince McMahon just needs to give Triple H reigns to everything and just go home and just live his best life away from wrestling. Because the dude is old. Mm-hmm. No disrespect. But Triple H has done so well with the NXT branches. And if he if Vince McMahon would just let him work with um 
these groups, I guess you can say. Yeah. Like, yeah. imagine how beneficial it would like it, it would be so much beneficial. But uh, uh, he, Triple H, I think he's happy with his NXT babies and everything. But you know, damn well he's being he's going to be so. If Vince McMahon decides to to retire, who else is going to run the company? I don't know. Why? Why do you think? Hold on. Why do you think Shaman Man came back? Because from what I understood, when you that whole time he was gone, he was doing very well. You know, doing what he was doing, like in China with the uh, that media network that he had out there, and was or whatever the fuck he was doing, he was doing very well. Then all of a sudden, he came back for some odd reason. Why do you think that was? Yeah, I think he came back because the ra- ratings were dropping, and they needed to put some type of. Vince Mc or um, like Man Family drama to bring the ratings back up because the I mean as much as I don't care for them the McMahon's do bring ratings up. Yeah. Now, what what I would ask of you, you know, aside from TV shit, you know, that's his son, that's his blood or whatever. Do you think mm-hmm. that he couldn't stand the thought? I mean, I'm not saying it in a negative way, but you, but do you think that since he bought the company from his father? Would it be more fitting for him in his mind to have his son take over after he stepped us down or die or whatever? And that's the reason. Well, why, yeah. And that's the reason I why they, Triple H <laughs> hasn't taken over or so on and so forth. And that's why he does more with the performance shit in NXT and all that other stuff. Yeah, I think Vince McMahon is very. He's the kind of person that he takes things to heart and he's very. God, what's the word? Prideful. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I I don't think I think he'll give his Shane McMahon a part of the company but to be honest with you I think that it's going to end up with Triple H let's say okay so not much Triple H let's say he'll give it to Stephanie yeah. but then he'll like Triple H will have a lot well, you know once this McMahon does decide to go I think that um, Shane and Stephanie would be stupid if they don't get as much out of Triple H as they can yeah. because that dude is knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. The, the dude knows, you know, his ins and outs of the business. He knows what the people want. He actually listens to the people and look how NXT is going. Mm-hmm. Like it's one of the hottest things. And I mean, right now, yeah, they're not winning rating wars with AEW and they haven't since they started going on television, but they're providing some good programming. Yeah. Look, look at Raw. Like Raw is what three hours, and sometimes those, those are the longest three hours in my life because, <laughs> you know. And I get you know I get this man is old, but like, you know, he needs to. It needs to get to a point where someone needs to tell him, hey, you know, you got to let it go because, you know, the things that he finds funny, it's it's not funny. Look at the stupid shit going out with Rusev and Lana. Yes, that. Oh man, that is horrible. <laughs> And then, the, the, like, the thing is, like, Vince McMahon loves those things. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the stuff that he likes. It doesn't intrigue me whatsoever. I'm pretty sure other people don't, you know, care less about Lana. Yeah. <laughs> because no one likes her. I mean, it's not no one likes her, but she's just a horrible actress. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, what's the point of, you know, continuing to push this storyline that's not going anywhere dude like there's so many wrestlers on the roster that are not utilized properly look how many wrestlers you know as of recent have been asking for their contracts yeah yeah and it's because they're not being utilized the way they want everybody wants to make it to WWE WWE and honestly like I I'm, I get scared when they bring up talent to the main roster yeah, like when they brought, would they uh, if they do this uh, decide to bring um, Adam Cole and Undisputed Era, I feel bad for those guys because for some reason the writers and creative team on the main roster just don't know how to, they don't know how to like write these guys off properly. Yeah, and then uh, they don't that, know. And then, that? and then I kind of think it's just more of a thing that we're such a big company, we make all this money. We want to sign everybody, but we don't have enough room for everybody, you know, because I mean, yeah, like, like, so they did good with the doing the, the extension of brands, right? So 
everyone stuck on their brands. Why? Because it, it allows people to um, be utilized, right? Yeah. But you can you can utilize. Look at Segrider. Segrider has been there forever. Mojo Rally just came back. Um, I don't know if you remember they were doing all those vintage videos of Mojo Rally. Yeah. And then he comes back and just gets destroyed in one night. Yeah. I don't, What's the point of that? I don't understand it either. And then you know I mean, we do we do kind of gloss over that they do other shit like I know they do they still do main event and you know the live shows and all that stuff but a lot of the time even though main event is on the network a lot of people don't even fucking watch that shit <laughs> you know well I mean I'm gonna I'll be honest I don't watch it yeah shit. and it they they try to bring look okay this is something that really pissed me off they weren't using Finn Balor, so they sent him to NXT. Mm-hmm. And I have why I have no I, and you know honestly I have no problem with that because at least there he's getting used, and now that they're on no, no. public TV, yeah, you know. and, that, and that's what I'm saying. Like he should have never left the he should have never left NXT because yes, he's the first ever Universal Champion. Mm-hmm. He lost. He had to give up the title the next day due to injury, and after that, he was never ever able mm-hmm. to recover. The same from that, yeah. You're never the same again. <laughs> yeah, and like you know, guys like um, even the females. Like, I mean, right now, the because there's less females, it's been okay. But look at um, where's Eric Eric Young and his crew? They debuted on SmackDown. Yeah, and <laughs> there no no one ever saw them again. That's it. They uh, they busted them all up. One of them is um doing NXT. One of them is doing NXT UK in a group with the, their champion. And then now we yeah. got Nikki Cross the over Walker. here. And then fucking Eric Young. Who the hell? <laughs> I seen him have a match, and I was just like, "Who the fuck is that?" Because he shaved all his hair and everything. I was like, that's "Yeah, a- oh shit." <laughs> and and that's what I'm saying. Like they were they were you know a super great friction of uh, group in uh, NXT and then they get to the main roster and it just doesn't work out. You know, look at uh, when the Females Revolution showed up. At first you had, you know, Becky Lynch and uh, Sasha Banks with um, Charlotte Flair and there were more fights within teams than there were with their competitors. Mm-hmm. And I get it. It's all about creating drama, but at the same time, like, at what point do you stay with in the you know right path to ensure that people understand you know the prices and kids understand like how things are going and stuff like that? Yeah. I think like they're just all over the place and they're trying to keep a PG, mm. but they're also allowing the wrestlers to drop a couple f f words or like you know curse words just to show they're humane. Yeah, but again. Nobody wants to see that. Like nobody wants to go to an amusement park and see and have a type of crocodile or anything just like come at you. <laughs> now, um, back to the topic of Bray Wyatt. When you first seen the whole deal with the fiend and everything, what you think about that? I like the idea. I like the fun house. I just don't care for his, for anyone's inability to beat him in anything. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think it's just, I, I, yeah, just, it's an entitlement thing. Mm-hmm. Like the few people that work out in that gym that are my bosses they're very good friends with like the owners. So anything that like, okay. So Bray Wyatt is portrayed as like the fiend, right? So you have the the house and then you have the fiend. Mm -hmm. Like the way the fiend is portrayed is like someone that's completely, it's never beatable. Right. So he destroyed Seth Rollins. This past pay-per-view, he beat uh, Bray or Daniel Bryan. Like, everyone knows he is going to win against The Undertaker. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless this one decides to be uh, Taker's uh, last match, this last one. Yeah. But even Wilter, or Wilter, even Gover came back because she kind of like challenged him to get out there because he wouldn't. I just, that's, that's all yeah. I want to see. Hey, that'll be good. So, uh, one of you, you talk about having two jobs and everything or whatever. One of those that happen to be in the wonderland that I occupy quite often, huh? <laughs> that is true. The only cashier, the smoke, uh, the smoke shop, uh, oh, the, cashier. Aisle number 11 or 12, right? Man, it's number six in my store, but yeah. Oh, number six. And yeah, y'all, y'all must have a small Walmart. <laughs> It's, it's actually pretty big. It's just a lot of checkout stuff now. Yeah. Got all them there. You know, like self checkouts yeah. taking over. So, I mean, how, well, how does that look on your future, man? They, they, they're replacing you with self checkout, baby. <laughs> I mean, self checkout can't give them a cigarette, so. True, true. So, see, yeah, you the necessity. They need you. you <laughs> yeah. I mean, I ain't going to be there long, but yeah, I mean, for real. Yeah. So, so do you have any weird tales of uh, Walmart folk since you've been there with the company? No, I mean I want to say, like my store, we would get like, a lot of crackheads, <laughs> but but that's about it, huh? Yes, sir. That's like I mean, there's there's really nothing I dislike about my job, other than I mean I don't care for the people, to be honest with you, and it's not just like all of them. It's only a few. It's like few. Um, and because I am, yeah. no. you know, things are good. And then here's our accountant. What's the, who? What I, what I had a problem with or whatever, because you know how I used to like to fuck around and everything, right? You know, fucking fireball, tiger claw, elbow strikes, all them bullshits, right? So mm-hmm. when I got out, that was like me trying to drop that stuff off the front end or whatever because like I can't just go meet people and be like fireball and think they would get the thing get the joke or kind (laughs) of be like they report me to HR and shit this motherfucker is like trying to do moves on me and shit (laughs) how's up so how are you doing with your with your stuff with um my job or the podcast with the podcast I like it man it's going pretty good January before years so, so about as almost about as long as I've been out. Yeah, because you start you started immediately after you got out. Yeah, yeah, like the last couple of weeks and everything. So it's kind of like my my pace keeper and everything. It's just like, all right, I've been doing this show for four years, so I've been out about that long. <laughs> I know you do a lot of the social media stuff where you were at one time. I know you took a break and everything. But have you ever thought about doing like your own thing, like more YouTube stuff or a podcast or anything like that? I think that I would be more into a YouTube thing if I just had, if I would know how to edit. Because I am horrible. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. Like, I am horrible at editing. Like, having someone that can, I say, teach me, but show me how to play. Yeah. Um, you know, something that's, we we'll say hard, but like complicated for me, then I'd be all down for that. Word, man. I mean, the term that was thrown at me that I find funny, uh, we are, uh, people that create content and everything. We are influ, yeah. we are influencers. <laughs> I heard that word thrown at me the other day. I was like, what the fuck is this influencer thing? Like to you to where, you know, you have a brand that you promote with your, with the clothing and everything. And I think what you got bang on your side too, right? Oh, that's just a lot of your favorite drink. <laughs> Hello? Your sister came by and took care of it. You took it. You still there? Yeah. Were you talking just now? No, I just said. <laughs> Never mind. Oh. Word. Well, what do you look? So for? what else? 
Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Question. Like, yeah, I was going to say, well, what are you looking forward to, you know, in the next coming year or whatever? I mean, we got freaking 2020 coming up. We still ain't got no fucking flying cars and nothing like that. So what, what's on the horizon for you, my man? So I'm going to start off 2020, uh, probably somewhere with family, but January 5th, I'm going to be taking a flight to London. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. I'll be there for 14, 15 days. So I think that's how I'm going to start my year off, kind of just blank and do what I can and take, you know, take care of what I need to take care of. But um, I'll be back Tuesday for sure. And I think that'd be pretty awesome. Word. Any more but, traveling but, in your future? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually said... Okay. So, with that being said, I know you got a lot of things that you got to take care of. You a working man now, fucking two jobs and shit. I thought you was a Jamaican for a second. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, for like the last year in the Marine Corps, I didn't do shit. Yeah. And now the guy, like, now I'm working these two jobs. So I'm like, oh, I'm paying for everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, barely getting no sleep and. But I mean, I enjoy it. Like, I that's that's what drives me. That's what fuels me. Like, that's the type of motivation that you know I strive for. Um, there are moments where it kind of sucks, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you can't really complain about that. Yeah, I mean, you living, and you mean that's all we can ask for right now. I mean, ain't too, ain't no problems that you got right now that you can really complain about. You're doing all right. Yeah, I mean. The only complaint, I guess, is the fucking the Marine Corps. Time. <laughs> there's a, there's something I, I will always be grateful, and that's how to de- that the Marine Corps taught me how to deal with entitled at dumbasses. They think that just because they are whatever, they feel that we have to bend down and give them the the yeah kiss their feet and shit. Life, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, like, you know, like, there's a specific YouTuber that I don't care for, but I like his videos. Yeah. I don't care for him, but I like his videos. And, you know, I'm, I'm giving him that opportunity, or I wouldn't say opportunity, but I'm giving him, like, a chance to get more followers. And it was just awesome. Yeah. And I mean, now you're having a boy, so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Word. So, man, I mean, you got England coming up or London or whatever. E- either or. London has fallen. And you got big things lined up for the new year and whatnot. I wish you the best of luck. I mean, and you know I'm always here for you whenever you need me, my man. So before we go, let everybody, whenever you get back on proper, so they'll have it whenever you start doing your thing again, let everybody know where they can follow you on social media. <laughs> All right, we good? Um, yeah. What's up? Yeah, my bad, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I was dealing with Kane. <laughs> all up on my stuff here. Badass dog. He, he tries to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like I was saying, um, I know you got a lot of things coming up, but whenever you hit social media proper, give everybody the heads up and um, let everybody know right now where they can follow you whenever you start doing your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am on Instagram. Um, my Instagram is I do what I want. It's a little weird. Um, it's one D zero what one, one, um, I am on Snapchat as well as Twitter at K N W R E S that's Kane and then wrestling, but I, you know, broke it down. So it's actually pretty cool. Um, and then I actually just got a TikTok, which is yeah. far fetched. And I thought it was the dumbest thing ever, but it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. The videos are not as bad as I thought they were going to be. I just found um, it myself. <laughs> What's that? I said, I just found it myself. 
Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, right now I'm still kind of a hiatus from those social media. I will come back full force in the beginning of the year, probably a day or two before my England trip, kind of just like talking about my trip. I've recorded a lot of um, stuff, you know, within my first um, couple of days and weeks and months in the mar- outside the Marine Corps, kind of like giving an update. Um, the intent is to make a whole video of it yeah. and kind of let people know like how it, how it goes or, you know, how it's been. But again, I'm just kind of just focusing on me, working on me, trying to get my stuff together and kind of get, you know, what I need to get to ensure that my dog has the best life. Cause you know, <laughs> yeah. I work for him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, you, you, you got to keep that coat glossy and everything. Yo, you're telling me that dude shed so much. And then in where I live, there's two dog bars. So you basically, they're just bars where you take your dogs. And, like, people literally just, like, it's a place you just full of dogs. And just, like, you just drink beers and just chill. Word, that sounds like paradise, man. Yeah, it's actually not bad, dude. And it's, like, walking distance from my house, so can't walk me home. <laughs> yeah man but like i was saying man it's great catching up with you i'm glad that you're doing well and you got some stuff lined up for the future hey man um i'm here for you if you ever need me my number has been the same for over 10 years vice versa dude and if you guys you know overall just and that's just all your listeners if you guys need anything you know, hit me up on social media. I might come off as an asshole, but I'm not really an asshole. Um, it's just my persona. And everyone thinks, everyone looks at my page and be like, oh, this dude is conceited. Yo, listen, when you want to make money, you got to be whoever the hell they want you to be. <laughs> and, you know, social media, I'm marketing myself. And that means that I have to look like I'm conceited. Hey, as long as, as, mon- as, long as the money comes in, that money's going to come in, but I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. I understand. As long as you, you know, what I mean. as long as you ain't up there doing the floss and all that other stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, no, that's only for the club, but that's only on, you know, like a, a bottle of Patron down my throat. Okay. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, just keep us posted and we'll be watching you on the interwebs when you come back. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll do something. That'd be cool, like, uh, to set up something from, we can set up some, like, Instagram live from England. Word. That'd be sick. I'm down for that. Yeah, that would, I would, well, I'll definitely get with you on that. Uh, we'll set up a date, and then while I'm in England, we'll do, like, some Instagram live, and then we'll do, like, kind of, like, uh, you know, interview aspect things from, from England, just kind of how things are, and we can go from there. And word, um, we need to set up a WrestleMania trip too, man. Yes, that is definitely yeah. Because in the book, it's in Miami next year. Yeah, I'm down the street from there. Not literally, but yeah, um, you're closer than I am. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm closer than you are, and it's you know the last four and a half years I was stuck in Hawaii, so you know damn well it's impossible to get that. So. Yeah, we're gonna have to get Nick. That that. Is, uh, we're gonna have to get Nick in on that too. Me and him just went to this last one together. Yeah, we, we need to get that shit. You know, figure that shit out <laughs> quick. Yep. But shit, man, I'm about to go uh de- disrobe from my working stuff, my civilian thing, which you you can kind of relate to now. But I'm gonna let you go ahead. Yes, and do what you got to do. All right, dude. You have a good night. All right, you too. Later. So, um, as I spoke about earlier, my my man JD was tired, (laughs) and I don't know if that a lot of that came through on the audio, but I mean, it was what it was. He's out living his best life in England, and um, whenever he gets back, he's gonna hit the ground running, baby. Maybe producing some video content, maybe doing a podcast, maybe. But it is what it is. I'm glad for him. He keep him busy. He uh, seeing the world and doing things. Which, I mean, I wish that on anybody, man. Just get out and see the world. Even if it's uh, outside of your little square where you live at. Your grid square. Why not? Go see another grid square. <laughs> go check it out over that way. But um, that's all I really got. 
you know, sh- another short episode for y'all. And um, before I get on out of here, let me go on ahead and uh, plug my things, you know, as I tend to do. You can find me on Twitter at It's B Rob. That's I T S B R O B. I don't really plug the personal account so much uh, like I used to or whatever. I, I've been more focused on using at 3R show, which you can follow all the show and, you know, everything is updated with it and whatnot. But hey, man, don't, don't count. Uh, at it's be rob out and you know, whatnot people tend to message me on that one a little bit because you know it's my personal account and they want to talk about personal things and whatnot which i am not opposed to so either or i'm here for you hit me up on either of those platforms on twitter you can also find me on instagram while i walk the hollowed halls of walmart at the three r show you can find me on facebook and everything just go to facebook.com forward slash three r show or type in the random rounds with rob in the search bar you find me either way and you can also find all the things that i've missed on random rob.com you know I, I one of the things i did miss uh youtube i got a uh, you search three r show on youtube that's the secondary youtube i have the one for random rounds with Rob, but that's more of a, you know, I don't maintain and keep that one up so much. It's just an automatic posting spot for the podcast whenever I uploaded the pod bean. So all the episodes kind of upload there as a secondary, but um, I'm trying the new things and whatnot on three R show on YouTube. So that'll be more of the personal blogs. You know, whenever I go to conventions, the little video clips and everything I get for that, because I don't like to save a lot of, that stuff on my phone and you know i'm iffy about the cloud stuff because i'm always emptying and changing stuff on that so i'm gonna just use youtube as my personal uh, memory bank for all my stuff that i don't want on my, to keep on my phone regularly <laughs> so there it is um on randomrobcast.com you can find me in the different ways to help support the show like uh, buying merchandise, hats, T-shirts, and all those things. If you, It's February now, so you missed out on that sale all of January. You know, got some discounts on hat shirts and all the other merchandise you got on randomrob.com. I was about to say Robcast. <laughs> Had to take the cast off of savings. But randomrob.com, you can find that there. Also, my Amazon links, my Amazon wish list. If you want to donate gear to the show, I got a wish list on there of things that I think I need. <laughs> If you want to give cash straight up and you don't want to be a Patreon by donating a dollar a month or ten dollars a month for new content, uh, give me cash straight up. Go to Venmo, freaking Cash App, PayPal. It's all on randomrob.com. And I think I've hit all the wickets. Don't forget to support the sponsors. Um, Hooks, Rubs and Spices. You can go to hooksrubsandspices.etsy.com and get 15% off your order. By using promo code random, which I'm using some hooks, rubs and spices right now. I cooked a delicious steak for my wife to take to lunch. Well, when she go to work today and I'm um, got some ribs uh, marinating in the crock pot with some hooks, rubs and spices on it. So, yeah, you can see all that on my Instagram at the three R show that I mentioned previously. So uh, check out hooks, rubs and spices. Get that 15 percent off with promo code random. Also. You can go to poddex.com and you can use the promo code random to get 10% off your order. It's a product that I recommend that I have purchased myself and I think is good for any podcaster on whatever level of the playing field you think you're on. If you think you're a hardcore professional podcaster or you're just a novice and you're just getting in the game, poddex can be another tool in your belt to help you, you know, get to that upper upper level and whatnot or just to keep you sharp keep you on your game and whatnot so um if you listen to the last episode with sir john lee i gave you a sample question of out of the interview deck the second edition and i think it was how much uh, money would somebody have to pay you to eat a live spider so uh i told you mine was zero because i wasn't doing the shit so here is another card that i plucked from the interview deck this is the first edition the last card came from the second edition and the question is if you can undo one moment in your life what would it be wow (laughs) 
that's some profound shit right there. So, um, for me to answer the question, and you know, I, I throw this out to you all as well. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at three R show or uh, Instagram or wherever you see the post. Cause I'm going to have this out there as well. Um, what is your answer to the question? I'll give you my answer. And, um, I don't think there's nothing that I would truly want to undo because I'm a prefer- I'm a firm believer that, you know, things happen to get you in certain positions for something else. So like, let's just say, you know, me and my baby mama, the fir- the, my first wife, we don't have a good relationship. You know, I could do, I feel like I could do better in life not even having known her or whatever. But at the same time, I went ahead my older two kids. So, I mean, I love my kids. So, you know, if I would have undid that, I would undo them. It'd be like a Thanos snap and shit, you know? So, and damn, you know what? You know, it sounds like I'm very salty right now because of my answer or whatnot, but you know, that's not the case. That was just an example to use and whatnot. I just feel like all the shit that I've been through in the past kind of led me to where I am now, which I am thoroughly enjoying my life right now. So if I would have changed anything back then, it might have a, you know, adverse effect on where I am now. I kind of believe that thing. So, yeah. So what is the one thing that you feel like you would undo? And don't try to ape my, my answer and whatnot. Don't be trying to take my shit. Well, you know, I don't think I would change anything either. Cause I mean, <laughs> you're stealing, you're swagger jacking, baby. But, um, yeah. That's about, oh, 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 no, that's not it for the sponsors. There's one more sponsor that you, uh, that you all come to know that sponsors the show. Yeah, get that sensual music, baby. Mm -hmm. I I, I jacked the sensual music from uh, Wrestling is Trash. This is uh, when we talk about the lady wrestlers. This is the music that will play in the background. But now I'm repurposing it over here on the Random Rounds of Rob to talk to you about a sponsor. You know which one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Get you some blue chew, baby. If your phallus is phallic, <laughs> go on ahead and uh, pop one of these blue chews, baby, and get your boner right for the night. Get down with the sickness, and hopefully you don't get no sickness, because in pairing with blue chew, you want to use some kind of protection. Yeah. Don't believe that your pullout game is the best, because, you know, your pullout game ain't going to protect you from STDs. Yeah. But there's something even more uh, worse than STDs, I would say, if you're not using protection. And that's (laughs) K-I-D-S. Especially if you ain't ready for them, baby. So um, make sure you strap that thing up tight. Put the diaphragm in, some ram wrap, whatever have you. But anyway, to get the party popping, go ahead and get that blue chew, baby. Go to bluechew.com and use promo code RANDOM and get that first shipment free. Only pay $5 shipping. The shipping is free, but the shipping is not. The product is free, the shipping is not. $5 shipping. Yeah, promo code RANDOM. Get your ding ling and swing with Blue Chew. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. Um, another thing that I wanted to throw out there, I've been promoting it on twitter mostly but i got a homeboy named glenn glenn abbott a supporter of the show and many other podcasts and everything and uh he's going through a tough time right now his wife has a uh, brain cancer so he's been taking off a lot of time from work just to tend to her and get her needs in uh affairs in order and whatnot and he has a gofundme right now to kind of help them out through the process so if you can uh help my man glenn out dollar from at least 10 people that's ten dollars you know or whatever you can give comfortably you know i think him and his family would be very appreciative of it i would be very appreciative of it as well and um i'll have the gofundme link in the show description so in the show description there will be a link to help out my man glenn abbott you know i'm not trying to guilt trip you into anything or whatnot but i mean i would be very appreciative if you can help my man out just a dollar anything man anything helps so um look in the show description and uh find that link 
And uh, that's all I got, man. I appreciate you all for listening and I'll see you next time.